Hey third graders, welcome back to art. This is Miss Mitchell. For this week, we are looking at an artist named Sandra Silberswig. And we're going to incorporate the intermediate colors that we talked about last time, as well as talk about analogous colors. This week, we are looking at an artist named Sandra Silberswig. So this is a picture of Sandra Silberswig on the right. She was born and raised in the 1960s, and she is from Toronto, Canada. Canada is this red country on the map right here. Sandra Silverswig has a condition called synesthesia. That's a big word, synesthesia. This is when the brain joins or mixes the senses. For example, you may taste words or see sounds. So if maybe you hear the sound of a piano, then you might see the color blue. Or if you see the word crayon, then maybe you have the taste of strawberries in your mouth. It's a very interesting condition and phenomenon called synesthesia. So even though she can feel overwhelmed by synesthesia, she uses it to help create her artwork. So it could be overwhelming just because it's basically sensory overload. She's experiencing all these senses and it can be a lot to handle sometimes. Um, but like I said, she does use these um, senses to help create her artwork. She created this little poem right here. It's called Synesthesia Goddess. I'm going to read it for you guys. It says, I am a synesthesia goddess. I have no fear of color. It lives in my soul, dances in my heart, spills out of my fingers flowing down a canvas. I can see your aura, taste the color black, feel the chill of the green wind, smell blue butterflies, hear the yellow rain. Life is never boring when inspiration is always around. So Sandra's artwork is inspired by another famous artist whose name is Pablo Picasso. So we have Pablo Picasso's artwork on the left side right here, these four pictures. And we have Sandra's artwork here on the right side. So you can see how she draws her portraits. Um, it's very abstract, just like Pablo Picasso's. Abstract means it doesn't look like real life. This does not look like it was taken by, the, by a photograph or anything like that. It's abstract. Here's some more of her artwork. So in her artwork, we can see lots of different elements of art. Specifically, let's look at the lines that she uses. She uses very bold lines. Bold means that those lines stand out or stick out. And they're usually black outlines. So everything she does is outlined in black. The shapes that she uses are usually asymmetrical. Asymmetrical means not symmetrical, not the same. So that means the shapes look different on each side. And the head is usually U-shaped and there's usually an L-shaped nose. And that nose can be a forwards L or a backwards L. You can see her use of color. Again, her use of color is asymmetrical. That means different colors on both sides. Okay, so she doesn't paint just orange on one side and then orange again on the other side. She uses blue on one side, green on another side, orange on one side, red on another side. So that's asymmetrical. It's not the same colors on each side. She does use a bold use of black. We talked about the bold black outlines. You can see how she also has these big black spaces and there's also a lot of black um, in between the shapes that she draws. And that just helps things stand out much more. Her colors are very bright. You can see um, this side of colors right here is very bright. Those are bright colors. These colors right here are what we call muted. Muted means that, or it's the opposite of bright. That means they're kind of dull. 
And we can also see her use of pattern. There are a variety of patterns. Variety means just lots and lots of different kinds of patterns. And she fills up the space. She uses all those patterns and she fills up the entire canvas. So with our next um, art project or activity, we are looking at intermediate colors, which we talked about from our last project when you created the color wheel. So remember, intermediate colors are created with a primary plus a secondary color. And the name of the intermediate colors uh, indicates what colors are used to make that color. So for example, red-orange is made with red and orange. Blue-violet is made with blue and violet. Yellow-green is made with yellow and green. So those are intermediate colors just as a review. We're going to use those intermediate colors and we are going to use them in an analogous color scheme. Analogous colors, that's a big word, analogous. If you see on this color wheel, it is three or more colors next to each other on the color wheel. So for this example right here, we see yellow and what's next to yellow? Orange yellow or yellow orange. And what's next to yellow orange? Orange. So these three colors, yellow, yellow orange, and orange are analogous to each other. If, for another example, if I point at blue, what could be two colors that are analogous to blue? We have several options, really. We can go upwards this way and we can say blue, blue, green, and green. We could go the opposite direction and go downwards. We could have blue, blue, violet, and violet. Or we can have blue be right in the middle and have blue, violet, blue, and blue, green. What's another example for red? So if we have red, we can go upwards. That would be what other colors? Red, orange, and orange. We could go the, this way. So we have red, violet, red, and violet. And again, the last option we have is to put red right in the middle between these two colors, which are what? Red, orange, and violet, red. So we have red, orange, red, and violet, red. Those three colors would be analogous. Okay, we're going to use our intermediate colors and these analogous colors that we talked about when we color our project. But for today, we just need to draw everything out first. So let's go ahead and make some art. Go ahead and get out any kind of paper that you have, whether that is blank paper like this, or maybe you have a sketchbook, that would be great. If you just have regular notebook paper like this, that works perfectly as well, okay? Use what you have. I am just gonna be using blank white paper here for you guys today. Also make sure that you have some sort of drawing utensil. Um, usually that would be just a pencil and an eraser. Okay, it's always good to have an eraser just in case you make mistakes, then you can erase them. Um, I would not suggest starting out with crayons or markers because you cannot erase those. Once you make those marks, they're there for good. So always start out with pencil. What we are going to be doing today is drawing a portrait in the style of Sandra Soberswig. So we looked at her portraits, which are pictures of people. You are going to follow along with me. You're going to follow me to a certain, certain degree just to get the basic outline of the face. But when we get to the details and the patterns, um, that is completely up to you. I want you to make it your own and put your own creativity and your own detail into it. Don't just copy mine. So your paper should be vertical. Vertical means straight up and down. This would be vertical. This would be horizontal. 
We want a paper vertical. We are going to start with the nose. Also, if you have a ruler, you're welcome to use it. If you don't, just do what you can. Do the best you can. You could also use another straight edge, um, like the side of your pencil box or um, side of your marker box, whatever works for you. Okay, so we're starting with our nose. So I'm using my ruler just because I like to have nice straight lines. We want nice, neat artwork. I'm going to start with a vertical line like this. It's up to you whether you want your nose to go this way, to the left, or to the right. So you can have a regular L or a backwards L. I'm going to do mine backwards, like this. So there's my backwards L. And I'm going to add some eyebrows. My line here is going to curve like this. I went all the way to the edge of my paper. What I'm going to do, so I created this line here and I'm going to follow, just kind of follow that through. So I'm adding some shape to it. Just like that. If you ever need to pause the video or need to rewind it, you can go ahead and do that. If I'm going too fast for you, um, yeah, just pause it or rewind it and play it again. And I'm gonna do this curved line again, right there like that. So I have my nose and one of my eyebrows. I'm gonna go back this way and do my other eyebrow like this. Once you have created your nose and your eyebrows, I'm going to come back here to my nose. I'm gonna draw a little line underneath like this. Okay, and I'm gonna add my mouth. I like to curve it just a little bit like this. And here is the top of my mouth, the top lip, and then the bottom lip like this. We do need the outline of the head right here. If you remember, it's kind of a U shape. It's shaped like the letter U. So I'm starting from the very edge of my paper here, and I'm just gonna go all the way to the other side. Notice I still have some space down here. I don't want a floating head. So I'm gonna draw a line down this way and a line down this way for the neck. And then I'm gonna draw a line this way and a line this way for just the shoulders. So we have the basic outline of our face right here. We do still need to add our eyes. Make sure that you fill up your paper. Make sure you're drawing big. These eyes are gonna be pretty big. Um, here's one eye. Think about the shape of an almond or the shape of a football or the shape of a lemon. Your eye over here is the same shape. Now, if you want it to match up at the same eye level you can, um, or if you would like to, you can kind of just have it be a little bit kind of funky looking, and you can see that my eye on the left is lower than the eye on the right. How you choose to do your eyes and do the details in your eyes is up to you. I'm drawing like a smaller almond shape on the inside, and Here's the pupil of my eye. Maybe you want your other eye to look different. This eye, I'm just gonna draw a straight line through the middle. Um, I am gonna draw a line this way. It's kind of like this eye is uh, half open, half closed. Now, the rest of how you decorate your person your portrait is up to you. Remember that Sandra Silverswag uses a lot of patterns. Lots and lots of patterns everywhere. So I am going to go ahead and speed up the rest of this video and finish with my patterns. Use whatever kinds of patterns you want. If you go back and look at her patterns that she uses, Sometimes she uses fish, sometimes she uses 
flames of fire. Sometimes she uses ocean waves. Get creative with the kinds of patterns that you use. You can use tree leaves, you can use stripes, you can use dots, anything like that. my finished picture, my finished artwork for this week. So it is not finished yet completely because we have not colored it yet, but we are saving the coloring for next week. Don't get ahead of yourself. You will have more time to work on this next week. So this is what I want you guys to have completed for this week. Just all of the pencil work. Once you have finished drawing everything in pencil, drawing all of your patterns and your shapes and everything, then the very last thing that you need to do for this week is to take a five second video of your artwork. I know in previous weeks I said to take a picture of it with your phone or your Chromebook, but I realized that was a little bit confusing and a little bit complicated um, because you had to find it in another folder and whatnot. So. Taking a five second video is all done within Canvas. If you do not know how to do that, or you did it last time, but you need help remembering how to do it, there should be a video on this week's assignment page that you can watch. So go to the assignment page, click on that video, watch how to take a five second video of it, and upload it to this week's assignment. Make sure when you're taking your video to hold it close to the camera, as close as you can without cutting anything off. I want to be able to see those details. And make sure you hold it still. Don't wave it around like this or move it. I won't be able to see those details. So hold it still, hold it steady. For how many seconds? Five seconds. And again, everything is done within Canvas. Watch that video if you need to on the assignments page. Once you have submitted your assignment for this week, then you are done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.